Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio. Uh, you know, we get to chat with Glenn Burroughs every, is it every fourth Saturday. Yes, he is here over in England. That's where Glenn Burroughs is based. I know you've probably heard him and seen him on Big Blend Radio before. He is a family history expert, a tour guide, and owner of Norfolk Tours in England. So if you travel to England, Glenn is the person you want to connect with. You can go to his website, norfolk co. Nope, let me say that again, norfolk-tours.co.uk. See, I have to read things, otherwise apparently it goes right out my head. Like I've got a big ear hole here, Glenn, and everything goes in, goes out. No, but welcome back, Glenn. How are you? Uh, hello, I'm good, thanks. I had a good old laugh with you two girls before we come on air, so that's always good, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. And, and you know, that's why I can't remember anything because we had the giggles mm. too much. You know, there's only, you know, so much I can do at the one time with my brain, you know. Hey, you have to laugh. You have to. Well, well, you have to. Make it. well, as we all discussed, the world has kind of gone mad. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I just, you know, today is Earth Day that this is airing. And mm. we want to talk about what can we do as travelers, as people in communities, um, as business owners consumers because that i hate that word but actually now i'm starting to really like it because human beings do consume quite a bit mm -hmm. and a lot more than we need to and so when we think about the earth and the planet um something you've you got an article it's up on blend radio and tv.com right now glenn um you talk about earth day and you talk about really going into plastics you go into politics a little bit in which we could just trash them all right um mm -hmm. Right, but so. I kind of want to say that customer service has when it it when it's gone out the window and I feel like customer service as we automate everything and we let big giant corporations take over everything and this automization and mm -hmm. that the systems are not done well to take care of our environment which means no. we're not being taken care of right at the end of the well, day exactly. Yeah, well, we're not. But not only are we not being taken care of as consumers, as customers, but the planet isn't. I mean, we were discussing a, a, a scenario that I'm going through at the moment, where I've I've actually ordered a, an item for delivery, um, and after I'd put the order through on the internet, I realised that I'd ordered the wrong colour. It's a simple thing. Just change the colour. I didn't want to change anything else, just the colour. Mm. Um, so I then I couldn't actually do anything online about it. So I had to call them up. I must have spent three quarters of an hour yep. on, a, on a call. Mm. And it turned out that they can't actually change my order because I'd put it through. What they needed to do was to deliver the item. Then I needed to contact them and tell them that I'd got the wrong item. Could I please return it? They would then come and collect the item and take it back. And then they would replace that with my replacement order, which is the one I wanted to order. Now, that's ridiculous. And that's yeah. gas. That's petrol. That's fumes well, in the air. That's, that's the plan. And a waste of time. That's yeah. total waste. Of time. I, could have, I could have done that mm -hmm. within that many seconds all the person well, who I called in needed to do was change the color on the order it's not as if I wanted immediate delivery this was going to be delivered in three weeks time not it's not tomorrow it's going to yeah. be three weeks in the future so there is plenty time to change my order but no no but you is, know what it is, is here's, let me introduce you to the term artificial intelligence <laughs> it means exactly what it says. You let the robot take over. Artificial mm. meaning not real. Yeah. Intelligence. Artificial intelligence. That is where we're headed. Unless we all get a heads up and yeah. take a look and go, hey, wait a minute. Well, we input the wait artificial intelligence. See, human beings are what does the input on that. So when they're doing these systems, customer service, the actual... They want to do 
whatever is a quick return for the company, but it's really not a quick return for the company. Yeah. The company is spending extra money. And back in the day, someone would be employed, take the call, exactly. take the order, make you feel warm and cozy that you just spent X Fix amount it. of dollars or pounds yeah. for this. And then you go, okay, everybody's happy. Oh, ring them back. I just realized, did I order the white or the black or the pink or the purple? What, you right. know? Oh, it's this. Oh, oh, is it going to take a little? Maybe it's a little longer. Maybe it's not. But back in the day, and I'm not going against computers. You could have computers and automation and certain things. Yeah, cool. But it's just get on there and ding, 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 and it's done. But yeah. we used to actually have order forms with carbon copies. One for yeah. the bookkeeper, cool. one for the company, and yep. one for the client. Mm -hmm. And maybe four, <laughs> one for the delivery person. So everybody has a sheet. I miss carbon copies <laughs> with actual signatures. Yeah, but that's because more I treats. think, yeah, but yeah, I agree. I agree. But um, there's also, you could go into, there's more mining happening for computer screens and they exactly. keep making us buy a computer every two to three years, like our cell phones. Yes. So, and I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's the other thing, isn't it? There's already inbuilt out of dateness. Put yeah. into items, isn't there? Exactly. I can't think there's a, there's a big word for it, but it's already inbuilt into things. Oh, I've called, got a word, but I'll be here. It's called Nancy. Yeah, it no, it's called greed. Yeah. Yes. But all it is, I mean, I know for a fact, I mean, I've just bought a new one of them, right? I've just bought mm -hmm. it. I know for a fact that that's already out of date, even though I only had it this weekend. Hey, listen, Glenn, <laughs> mine's coming tomorrow. My new one's coming tomorrow, and I'm going to ask yeah. them. Please, I want it to be purple instead of black. Well, oh, no. the, the, the problem is with <laughs> all of these items is that they say that they're simple. It took my daughter two days with me to set everything up and still uh -oh. things are not set up on my my new phone. It said don't, it don't do that, Glenn. everything across, but it doesn't. And then Glenn. you have to, I mean, not only did I order the phone for delivery, I then had to order um, a case that had to come separately, wrapped up in a cardboard box with loads of plastic inside this cardboard box, just, mm -hmm. just for a case for a telephone. It had its own box that was delivered separately to the telephone and because twice they, as they big. can't send it together. That's yeah, and it's twice as big. It's yeah, twice see, this is, this, is, this is the systems like of these you get big... A box this big, and the item in it's this big, but yep. here comes the box. You know, yep. it's like, yeah, what is? Yeah, happening? you don't need a giant box for those who are just listening and not seeing the visuals of our rant here. But and it is basically this is just ranting about how businesses are not actually doing. And they'll go, oh, you know, we use soy-based paper, but by the way. We're sending 20,000 tons of it out that we don't need to. It's like you go to yeah. the grocery store, Glenn. Now, you can go get the potatoes in the bin if you want. Yeah. You know they're not organic. Who knows where they come from? So everybody eyeballs. Now, unless you go to the fancy Lottie Daw stores that will charge you $5 a potato. I'm kidding. But like if they're organic and or pesticide free or whatever, somehow... In mainstream grocery stores, not the specialty stores, they now have to be bagged. So you get them in a bag with a little bit of netting so they can breathe. Your little potatoes can breathe. And yes, they're still going to grow things because they're organic. And then, oh, you can self-check out because we want to eliminate people checking out. But if you're like Nancy and I, we always order a bottle of wine, which means someone has to come and see. Yes, I'm obviously over 40 years old. But let's make sure that we input your birth date and ask you. Then I go, oh, well, that felt nice. But then you really knew, didn't you? They're um, really coming to yeah. check on my and age, then not and hers. then they, and then and then they go, thank you, ma'am. And then I go, did you have to say ma'am? But um, anyway, we go through this rigmarole that we actually still need human help because even the computers. Oh, the computer did it twice. Maybe I did it twice instead. No, call the person. Excuse me. We can't go, no, this is wrong on the computer. We're too stupid, apparently. So we still need the human person. Or now, if you make the choice to go to one of the 20 
checkout stations or 10 stations, depending on the store, there's going to be one person that's going to check people out because of the elderly, right? Or those who hey. are disabled, right? And so they're going to help. You go through there. And what are they going to do with the bag of potatoes? Everybody, you know what they're going to do. They're going to take the bag of potatoes. And even if you bring your own cloth bags, what are they going to do? They're going to put it in another plastic bag because we, we certainly cannot carry a bag of potatoes unless it's in another plastic bag. That's my rant. Well, well because it doesn't have the handles. The, the, problem, the problem that I see from all of this is about the, as I, as I put in the article, you know, you've got potatoes and things that are coming in from Egypt, from, from mm -hmm. for us anyway, for Egypt, from Spain, from France. But we grow wow. potatoes. You know, why do we keep importing yeah. all this stuff that we don't mm -hmm. need to import? I mean, when, when I was a kid, yes, I know I was a kid in the 1960s, but we grew the food that we ate. And if exactly. we didn't grow it, we got it off the local marketplace. So we were eating stuff that was number one was in season and number two that was local. The only mm. things that I had, I remember when I was little, we sometimes had oranges and bananas, but not very often. So, you know, why are we now getting used to eating strawberries in February or having things like kiwi fruit or avocados and things? I know they're nice to have every now and again, but we're now getting so used to having stuff that we, we don't need to eat. We don't mm -hmm. need to have raspberries mm. in February. Well, why, this, this why is are we, why are we doing this? Well, it, it, because yeah, I mean that's what the corporations are doing. They're trying to make every delicacy what what used to be considered a delicacy or out of season fruit delicacy that you would opt to pay a little more for if you really had to have it and have it shipped to you. Now it's going to be oh every place you go everything is there. And you're going to pay twice as much, whether or not you plastic, and yeah. it's all been flown. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, oh I mean, my god! They have actual yeah. baking potatoes here. Mm -hmm. You know, because I read just I went to the grocery store yesterday mm -hmm. after reading your article, and I should never have done that mm -hmm. because they actually had baking potatoes wrapped in plastic. Each yeah. individual potato was yes. wrapped in plastic. Oh uh, yeah. What the hell for? I and, don't know. and here's a, the cucumbers. potato doesn't oh, want to be wrapped in plastic. Oh, no, they don't. That's None how they get the mold. Nothing, absolutely nothing wants to be wrapped the, in plastic. The first thing no. we do is take them out. And here's the thing. I want to switch from the rant because even though we're doing really good and I'm apparently really mm, mad about really. potatoes, but <laughs> I want to stick, but I want to go to places that are doing the right thing. And and I think it, it it's harder to do, but it's once it is because comes part of it i think it's important so behind us we have photos of carrots because yeah. i wanted nancy to have carrots on top of her head in the picture anyway <laughs> so but, but here's the thing sort of. we, we are seeing more and more especially now that covid's kind of on its way out even though but it's you know whatever we're seeing more and more farmers markets everywhere yeah. we go and Perfect. even out of sea, like, you know, mm -hmm. if it's cold and windy, they'll go on the inside and will be people's baked goods and music and art. So they become more of a community event, not just about the fruits and vegetables. It will become artisans as well. Yeah. Uh, people who are bakers, maybe they're growing mushrooms. So I think we're seeing more and more of that. And, and some of the travel writers we interview all the time, we were just talking about this on a recent show. In fact, the day before your show airs. We were talking about going to farmer's markets as travelers, because then you get to understand the taste of the place. And we were talking exactly. about um, restaurants doing what's called now hyper local. Like one lady was talking about going to hyper local. I'm, I'm fine with it. Hey, everybody's got to have a term so long as they don't use the word pleasure ever again. <laughs> but hyper um, local. But I hyper mean, local. Well, no, look at this. Look at this. Hyper local. And it's hard to do. And it is a little bit more costly. 
until we all get back to our traditional roots, like Glenn, you were saying, like what we did as kids, you know, yes. there's a guy that this lady was talking about. He's a chef. He goes and catches the fish right there and he cooks it on the shore, on the beach for you. Yep. yep. Using wood mm -hmm. that is sourced from right there. Like yep. everything is from there. Mm -hmm. So yep. you're getting the true taste of place and the wines were from local. Yep. And so when we say hyper local, it's like even the butter needs to come from the farm. Everything and, needs to come from And there. so how much plastic is being involved in that? The small entrepreneur cannot afford to overdo their packaging. They can't. No. I mean, I remember that we had we had a group of American uh, travel agents over once and the hotel that I put them up in, um, we decided to give them a local meal. And I think the furthest thing that came was from a few miles away, literally three or four miles away. And that was the ice cream that came from a, a local dairy. Everything else on the plate had been from within a, a mile. You know, cool. there were eggs, there were, mm -hmm. there were pheasants, there were um, crayfish mm -hmm. from the local river. There, you know, there were fruit and vegetables from the farm. You know, everything had come from within three or four miles. And awesome. that, that is how we used to eat. But yeah. the, thing, the thing that I am more annoyed about nowadays is the unnecessary. I mean, in England at the moment, we've been we've sort of more or less banned the really cheap plastic carrier bags, which is great. But they've been replaced by bigger, thicker carrier bags that you can reuse. Why? Also, we've banned some of the plastic packaging on things. But actually, we're still wrapping up individual cucumbers, in individual heads of broccoli. You know, why? We've, we've got boxes of imported soft fruit that are all in plastic boxes that obviously were put in boxes in Spain. Why are we using all this plastic? Why are we still wanting to eat things that we're not? Because people growing? are scared of their germaphobes, right? And, uh, yeah, and, but you and wash so them and you peel people, them. Exactly. But there are people who actually have that, that are truly yeah, like, yeah. they don't want to shake your hands and everything. Yes, I understand that. I, yeah, but I aren't understand. we also seeing now post-COVID that a lot of us are getting sick quicker because we don't have those... Um, our immune, immune systems have, yeah, be, have become, you know. I understand that but, totally. But, but that's why we wash things. Exactly. I mean, when, and when you won't was, have mold if you when, keep when things out of kid, plastic. We, we used yeah. to we used to make use of the seasons. So you know, we'd have loads of cauliflower during the cauliflower season. You know, when the right. new carrots were in, we'd have lovely new carrots with the with all the tops still on. You know, like you've got uh -huh. behind. You. you know, when right. when we had the old carrots, you know. We could then put them in sacks in potato and, you know, in um, brown paper sacks and right. they would keep they would keep for months. The same as potatoes. They keep mm -hmm. for months in their brown paper sacks. But if you buy a plastic bag of potatoes, that lasts about a week before they're gone. Oh, because but, this is, but that's sweaty. interesting because it's they have sweaty. expiration dates. We always go now. What is up about the expiration date? Because now yeah, eggs. Really. Eggs is my new thing. I want to know because it has to do if you wash the eggs, because now this country wants to sterilize absolutely everything. Wash mm -hmm. the eggs, take off the protective shell. Now you need to refrigerate them. And so now you have an expiration date on the eggs. Well, if you, you left the, the eggs, not the shell, the, they wash, there's a protective layer from the chicken that naturally encases the egg. Now, like when we were on the farm, we would take the eggs, you could leave them out. You could eat them. You did not need to put them in the refrigerator. In fact, you shouldn't. But no. Um, no, no. Here we must sterilize them. They even have like this. It's almost like they've been whitewashed. Even the organic ones, they've been over sterilized. Well, yeah. I wonder, is it because we put 20,000 chickens in one tiny coop? Really? That maybe they're pooping on each other and a little bit more unsanitary than normal? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I mean, and, well, and also, I mean, that not only in in the conditions that the animals are in, but the conditions that the fruit and vegetables and things in fact. It's not funny, packed. Nancy. No, I mean, it's it's years ago we used to have local farmers who grew local food, 
and you used to get local food. And and in season, it's quite cheap because yeah. you know people mm-hmm. have got a glut, and they yeah, can't surplus. always they can't sell the mis. And I mean, supermarkets are now doing it where they're selling misshapen fruit and vegetables. Yes, we are seeing that stuff like that. But I mean, yeah. we used to do that years ago. We used. But to there's a companies now creating. There's a company where you get a, a like a, they call it a CSA delivery. So it's like consumer supported agriculture, which is yep. a really cool positive thing mm. that we have here for local. And um, there's some an organization that goes out and it's basically all the um, misshapen. Maybe it's got a bruise, and you're going to pay a little less. Yeah. Deliver to your door. Okay, so. I don't mind so much of that, but do we need everything delivered to our door? I suppose we're so busy. So this is where I go with the consumerism. And um, after we interview you, we're going to do an interview about divorce. And I want to ask this divorce lawyer, are most people getting divorced because they're so busy being busy, keeping up with their busyness that they are not conscious about each other and then wake up one day and go, Oh, what the hell <laughs> what did I do? You know what I mean? Or get angry and all these things happen. So I wonder about our own, you talk about health in your article. I think it's mental health as well. I think this is an actual hmm. root problem that we have. And then there's entrepreneurs that go, oh, well, I can do this. I can create a business out of misshapen fruit. Good, yeah. because somebody needs to do something. Yeah, but still, because it, it gets it goes, thrown away. But this becomes this thing of perfection, this uh, pursuit of perfection that we have as in society now. Yes. Back in the day, we used to have to hike and hunt and gather for our food. And I'm not the saying we have to go plant, back to that. The potato plant has its potatoes. It doesn't go, everyone should look the same. That's a human thing. Yeah. The That's potato exactly. plant produces potatoes based on all the roots that go out. Well, that's the most minerals and vitamins and water. And therein lies the difference of the shapes of the friggin' potato. God help us. The potato <laughs> heads. Oh, this is a total red show today. No, my God. Seriously. Oh, my God. This potato looks different than that one. Holy. I won't say the next word, but you know what I'm saying. No, no, no. Now, what? now potatoes no. get to have their own pronouns. So now the potatoes must all look See, Glenn's like, no, no, no. But that's, I'm, I'm, no, but, I'm behaving. I'm really No, no, on. no. But this, but this but, is a positive thing. This is a positive thing because I think, okay, so we have this thing of pronoun changes in this country, your country, Glenn. And, and it is about accepting people as an individual of who and what they are, right? As an individual. So an no, individual that's good. Individual potato. But that's what I'm trying to say. So in a way... We do, we're kind of going through a shift in civilization, I think, in society. And we need to make changes now on um, uh, emotional, mental, and physical change. Do you know, do you know if you get a perfect potato every time, that potato, the perfect potatoes have been modified. They are yeah. not pure. They're not natural. They have had plastic surgery. They've been modified. <laughs> no, but, okay, but, but, but I'm trying to say, like, let me go way. back to this, Nancy. Let me, let, yeah, the thing is, okay, sorry. Let, the, let everything be individual. And that's where I think we're having to have all these new rules, societal rules, and we're not supposed to say this, say that. Instead, which I get it. But I would like to have conversations more and get to have build relationships and spend time on those things rather than labels, right? Yeah. Our food, the labeling thing has come about, which is important because we have so many processed things in our food and in our healthcare products. And I mean, even in shampoo, you have to go and read the labels to see what kind of chemical they're putting in your shampoo. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that is, that is another, another problem, which obviously I, I, I didn't touch on, but the, the trouble is nowadays, there are so many chemicals that are going into our food and, and mm-hmm. our other, other products that we're actually putting back onto the planet. Now I'm sure that a lot of that stuff really shouldn't be going down the drains and ending up in our rivers because who knows what all this stuff is it's all mm-hmm. chemicals and we don't 
we don't actually need it all. It's all there for, for other reasons, other mm -hmm. than other than for what we I mean, when I wash my hair, you know, your I, hair looks good, this, Gwen. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, I use the shampoo or whatever it is, but it isn't just soap anymore. It's mm -hmm. 27 million other different things, and most of them are chemicals. And well, do, do we actually need them or are we just having them in there because the people who produce them are just putting it all in and, there? Well, now you we have well, people that about, counter that. About, we okay, have let's say like, you wash your hair with the shampoo and you like the shampoo and you like the way your hair comes out. Now you grab a towel to dry your hair. But now on the dryer is something called starts with a B, but I'm not going to say it in air dryer thingies and chemicals in the dryer to dry the towel and make it soft and fluffy and oh, so the, oh, the, the dryer yeah, sheet. so they yeah so the dryer sheet chemicals now are in the towel and you put the towel on your head and what if the chemicals from the dryer sheet on the towel mm -hmm. say to your hair shampoo i really don't like you let's fight well it does it on your skin I, well no because now they have no, because now um, the, the laundry detergent and dryer sheets, they put these little sheets in your dryer and it's supposed to soften and make your clothes smell good, but it's full of chemicals. And right. so, mm -hmm. and they've done studies, they've done studies that show mm -hmm. like these chemicals, like people put air fresheners all around their house it's that attack so every few God. hours, they yeah. spray stuff. And you walk they by. have shown, and we've done interviews on this with actual chemists and biologists have shown that they change people's personalities, yep. they affect your hormones, your emotions, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they change for kids and for animals. Mm -hmm. They mess with their molecular really? chemical makeup and make people mm -hmm. angry. Crazy. So maybe Nancy, you've been sniffing too much. I, I was going to say, yeah, that's oh, oh, yeah, what Nancy. the problem is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Nancy's. I'm, but this well, is true. You're talking, you're, you're talking about one, tumble dryers. I mean, I if, we we yeah. still have have our linen lines out. I was going to put my computer out and show you my garden because we've got linen line where we hang mm. our linen. We don't dry That's it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. But this is the problem. You see, we're not actually realizing what we are doing to our surroundings mm -hmm. and no. what we're doing to ourselves because mm -hmm. we're just we just. It seems to have been a very short process mm -hmm. of us changing our ways and mm -hmm. suddenly we're putting things in our bodies in our food in our surroundings and we've got no idea what is going on what it is no yeah, yeah. and it's also so, how we're also how we're producing food so it's not just you know it's like even you think oh we're eating a, a carrot is fine oh well does it have pesticides now it becomes a game of entrepreneurship of um, business it's competitive now companies are going hey i'm going to be organic i'm going to do this which costs a ton of money to now do what was natural and normal to do in the first place now we have to reverse mm -hmm. so there are really good companies doing really good things and there are like we were talking about cons consumer supported agriculture when we were yeah. last year um summer we went up to madison wisconsin which we've done in the snow but then it's really good good to go in spring and summer and we did fall too and um the lady we sat for allison she's texting me she goes oh i i go to the farmer's market this day every week and mm. and i support this farm and she actually volunteered on the farm to learn and to help which yeah. i thought was nice yeah and um no, she says, cool. would you mind? She says, it is like a 15, 20 minute drive there going. And if you don't want the produce, she says, I want you to eat it. I just don't want it to sit there and the farmer waste his time. I'll get a friend to go and do it. What? And I'm like, oh, I'm going, I'm going. You know, I just got to mm -hmm. work around our, you know, recordings. I'm going. And I went and here's the farmer. You find his stall. It was so cool. It was small, but people were selling flowers and baked bread and, there were mm. painted cows everywhere, which was cool as a public art, you know, and it was a little community and everyone was happy. You could see as soon as they saw the flowers, mm. people were happy. There was a, somebody playing music. There were little tables set out where people could actually buy bits of food. And I was like, look at this happy bunch of people. Well, this is yeah. nice. Shiny, happy people. I found the farmer and I said, I'm here for Al oh, He goes, oh, Allison's here's her bag. And he goes, now here's a box. This is the swap box. 
whatever you guys don't want to eat, if that's not your preference, you put it in the box and take something in replacement. And I just was like, no, we're, we're I don't want, you know, I don't want to mess with people's food. Mm. I couldn't believe what she paid, like mm. how little and yeah. the bounty. And I put it out on her table, her dining room table. And it was half the dining room table was covered mm. with this variety mm. because we're seeing the farmers, the organic ones. And even if they're not certified organic, most of them are trying not to use pesticides and everything. Yeah, of course they this are. variety of produce coming wow. from this one little farm that she's supporting and others are supporting and none of it. And she said her biggest problem, she's always giving it to her neighbors and stuff. And I think now this is where we are making That's positive change. We're ranting away, but on the positive, mm -hmm. if we can go back to more and more of these kinds of experiences and to see kids be able to speak to the farmer and, you know, and even go to the farms, we're seeing a lot of farms now, because in, in wineries do it too, because farming is expensive and timely. Mm -hmm. And so they do things like events on their farms. So yes. it helps subsidize financially um, yes. because you don't make, we, we know farmers and it's, you, you know, it's farmers really too. hard in to your make family. Money. It is so hard to make mm -hmm. money and, and I've done farm work. It's hard work yes. and mm -hmm. you're relying on mother nature and then you're relying on people understanding so a lot of farms are doing, you know, bed and breakfast, um, farm stays, maybe an Airbnb thing or on their property or events like produce events, like, hey, the pumpkins are out, come and get them while they're here. And so you're seeing kids and their parents kind of reconnect. And I think it's through kids and getting kids involved to understand where carrots come from, for example. The, exactly. adults, the adults are, we have to, the kids are the catalyst. That's how it, I always, it always has been. If you want mm -hmm. to educate the parents, you've got to educate the children because the mm -hmm. children are going to be the ones who are going to tell the parents all about it. And mm -hmm. if you want, if you want parents to, to get involved in anything, involve the children and they'll bring their parents along. Mm -hmm. And that has all, that always been the same thing. You know, yeah. if, 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 say for instance, when I used to take ch um, children from my local primary school up to the local museum and we would have a look at you know whatever i used to get reports back from the museum to say that they've had a sudden influx of local people to the museum because the children have said oh well you ought to see such a thing we've just seen them mm -hmm. you know and then the parents have gone along so if you encourage children you encourage the parents mm -hmm. you know and, and yeah. it, it it always works because parents yeah listen well, to you're busy children. you have to keep up with your kids your kids are good be, nags you're supposed to be a couple steps ahead at least you know i, I think you're not. they so they so often are you know yeah. and they're, they're the ones who who learn about different things at school and mm -hmm. then they come home and, and they they teach their mm -hmm. parents and also yeah. they have wonder and um they don't have the negativity that Excitement. we as adults have have you know, grown accustomed to. We always have negative before positive. I mean, yeah. now we're getting to the positive side, but we all had a good rant in the beginning. You know, yeah. but 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 that's the truth. Is as adults, we always you know the wonderment sometimes leaves us because we're yes. so busy. And I'm going back to that busy of being the, the busyness of being, and 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 that quest for the perfect car, the perfect this, which really does not exist. So we're like we're. Yeah. I don't know why we have this. I don't know if it's greed, money, um, civilization putting airs on us, or I don't know what what how this started, but it's it's nonsense. <laughs> I'm just going to use that totally, word. It is, it, but I mean, one thing that we have lost a lot of, and I think a lot of it is because of how some of us have sort of been brought up and how the system has told us that we can't do things. We, we need to try and get a can-do attitude. Yeah, We exactly. need to try and think that what we can do actually will have an effect. You know, it's the old starfish on the beach story. You've heard the oh, starfish. On oh, the do it, do it. I would tell everybody. I love it. I love it. I love the starfish on the beach. You know, this man was yeah. walking along the beach and he saw in the distance another man who was just throwing the odd starfish into the sea because there was millions of starfish had been washed up. So he keeps walking along and this he, he actually gets up to the man with the starfish and he's throwing this starfish in 
you know, and then another one and then another one. And the first book says to the bloke with the starfish, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm throwing these starfish back into the sea. He said, there's millions of them. You're not making any difference. He said, but I'm making a difference to this one as yeah. he threw it back into the sea. And that's exactly what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to realize that actually we can make a small difference. You know, mm -hmm. even if we if we decide to spend 20 pounds or 20 percent of our Christmas shopping, for instance, I know it's not Christmas, but say, for instance, we decide to spend 20 percent of our Christmas shopping bill with local independent suppliers, that will have a massive effect. Mm -hmm. You can imagine 20 percent right. of your income will actually go to that that. Mm -hmm. that or that company yeah. or that because you don't yeah you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater no, you don't have to do no. and i think that's a huge point what you're saying is that you just do a little thing here and there it's like exactly okay can if, if this is going to cost me 10 bucks more than you know doing the big box store maybe it's really more important because it's going to boost my economy my yeah. local which means better schools yeah people are living happier exactly. you know, nine it's, times it's out of ten it's better it's better yep and, and also you know where the money is going to go to because if i mm -hmm. spend 20 percent, if i spend 100 percent of my shopping bill at a local supermarket i've got no idea where that's it's gone to some bloke buying a new yacht probably whereas mm -hmm. if i spend 20 percent of my, shopping bill with, <laughs> no, with my, local, my local market trader who sells right. carrots and, and sell Ariac and things if if I'm spending that, I, I I see him every year. I see him every week. I see his kids because I see mm. him at school. You know, I know where the money's going to. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I spend it with a, a national or a multinational, all the profits are going. Who knows where? It, it it's the yeah. same for musicians now, right? Mm -hmm. So as yes. we go through this big change of corporate stuff, right? So the internet's been fantastic for musicians to have a platform. However, like on Spotify, it's the same thing we deal with as podcasters. Everybody wants to put ads on everything. And, you know, I'm not anti-advertising, but just please come to us first. Thank you very much. Um, just saying, just saying. But um, it's this corporate thing of like Spotify. Like, no, I mean, we're on Spotify. I'm not knocking it because a lot of musicians need and want it. It helps them go, hey, we've had... X number of downloads, so people like our music. So please book us in your your you know event hall or your festival. Yeah, so in that way it helps. But if yeah. they relied, even the biggest musicians on the planet, if they get a thousand bucks a month, I mean you have to have a million downloads to get like ten bucks. Kind of, I'm not kidding. Yeah, it is so ridiculous. You get a yeah. I think for every ten thousand downloads, you get a quarter of a percent of a penny or something yeah. i mean it's I, 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 I have to put that it's oh, okay. no matter it's, it's just you're not going to make money right and a lot of musicians like during covid it was really difficult so they did things online and some made more money actually but they they promise they make money by us going to their performances yes and supporting the the fee to get in but even the fee to get in half the time goes to the bar or the restaurant, which yep. they need to make a living too. So this is do. their setup. Everybody has their agreement. But tip them if you can. Buy the merchandise. If they make their money, musicians, by you buying their CD. Whether yep. or not you have a CD player, just buy it. You know. And so this whole streaming online thing is taking away their money. And so I'm very excited. So we can complain again. Like, here's the rant. The rave. We're going back to rants and raves radio, Nancy. I swear to God. Right, doing go it again. <laughs> yeah, but we have Let's to have a in. rave. You always have to Let's have a rave in music. There. The rave is vinyl is back. It is making a step by step progress back. So you have something special. So when you put a record on, it's not just about pushing a button on a remote control. You're actually doing the act of taking it out of the sleeve, reading the artwork, the liner notes. You're putting it on and you're actually having to balance the needle on the record. There's and a consciousness. And that's where I was better. going to. Oh, it sounds it better. Sounds but better. There's a, it's a consciousness that I believe we as civilization have been putting ourselves in danger of losing those kinds of things. 
the more we sit on the couch and use a remote control, the bigger our belly gets. Or <laughs> some parts and the body. more flippant we are, we don't have the patience. See, that's the other thing about the starfish story. Yes. I mean, Every little thing, thing that's you, a patience. You've just, you've just hit the nail on the head. Is it? We, we want everything now. You know, we don't, we know. don't wait for anything. And, and what's the rush? All, all we do is we sit in the living room and we say, um, Alexa, play whatever. And the, oh. the little Alexa thing will play whatever music you want. She's going to gonna hear you. She's going to start no, playing. She's going to start talking. <laughs> We oh, have she, talk she but, does. We've heard on radio shows somebody will say that, and then she answers. So we're like, no. <laughs> but but you know, we we just we just want everything now. We don't. And and I'm gonna go back to where I started about having strawberries at Christmas. You know, we don't want to wait until July when it's the strawberry season, and strawberries are fresh and sweet and juicy. Mm -hmm. We want to have strawberries from Spain at Christmas time, and they taste like cardboard. But I, I was just going to say, it takes the special out of it. Of course it does. It's not special anymore. So now we're not and eating it, seasonally, it, which is no, not good it, for our, our bellies. No, and it doesn't taste, you're right, it doesn't taste the same. No. Mm -mm. So what? why do we do it? We do it because uh -oh. the, the supermarkets and the big business have told us that we must have strawberries at Christmas. You know, yeah. and well, this, indoctrination. This, well, this is the other mm -hmm. thing too. Um, with all of that, is you used to make preserves. So in summer, you get yeah. this bounty. You'd make yeah. uh, strawberry jam, right? Yeah. Oh, a good strawberry jam. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. ooh, and marmalade, right? Oh, those two things. Mm -hmm. You got me. You mm -hmm. got me. However, in summer, for breakfast, you don't need to use strawberry jam because you've got strawberries to put with your cereal or actual fresh mm -hmm. strawberries, right? Exactly. And then winter comes and you're like, ooh, I'm going to be naughty, have a little extra sugar because I'm using the strawberry jam, which has a little bit more sugar. So you're giving yourself a little treat. So each mm -hmm. season has a treat. I'm just saying, and you're really right. I mean, the seasonality, we need to appreciate the seasons and what they do for us and our bodies. You know, it's, I think we you talk about that in your article about us not eating according to the land. I mean, they know that honey, local honey helps our immune system. Yeah. So why aren't we doing that? You know? Well, you know, I, I've often I've often thought that, you know, I'm the first generation who has in well, in 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 my family, I'm the first generation who has regularly eaten um avocados. You know, none of my ancestors ate avocados. Um, I'm the only one in my sort of ancestors who have eaten a lot of meat, you know, mm. because we probably only normally, even when I was a child, we probably only had meat three times a week if we were lucky. But I, mm. I'm pretty certain my dad wouldn't have had meat even that many times a week, mm. you know. So I'm just, I'm just wondering whether there is a tie between what we're eating today and what problems we're getting with our digestive system, with our uh, immune system, mm -hmm. with our intolerances. I mean, mm -hmm. I never knew anybody at primary school who had asthma. I never knew anybody mm -hmm. with asthma. I never knew anybody at primary school who had a, an allergic reaction to, to nuts or, or anything else. But nowadays, we all know people with asthma. We know, all know people who, oh, you can't mm -hmm. have nuts in school because children have got nut allergies. Mm -hmm. oh, you can't, I'm allergic you can't to nuts for sure. <laughs> Sorry? No, I said I'm allergic to nuts for sure, but I'm skidding. Well, but but I, you. No, I actually when, am. But I grew up when I grew she up was eating a child, nuts. She, when she was a child, she wasn't allergic. Like when we lived in Kenya, um, she used to eat walnuts and cashews especially because they, they they're grown there. Oh, and, I just, I yeah, just wonder whether there's a connection yeah. with all of the stuff. Yeah, I think there's a part I think there is. Absolutely, I think there's a connection so. to it, and I think it has to do with what, how things are raised. Like the whole mm -hmm. gluten thing, has to do with how wheat is raised, and it's not necessarily the heritage. Mm -hmm. Like some people, there's there's farmers working on it now, to bring back the heritage grains, like yeah. spelt. 
people don't mm. know what spelt is you know yeah. it's like these these grains that we use it's like in this country heritage turkeys are making a comeback and chickens yeah. because we're getting to a point where we only have one kind of chicken one kind of turkey and every and so they're mass produced which means it they're not even in, the real in, breed in anymore. nature tells us when we overproduce one thing mm -hmm. there's going to be a few that aren't as healthy right we're going to have a few runs in the litter basically and yeah. and and that's truly happening and people don't get mad at me it's just science i didn't do it um but that's the same thing and so when we do crops and we do this huge mono culture the monoculture thing is bad where all you have is carrots for miles and miles and miles, miles. And the soil bad. is not healthy because now it's it not getting be. these different it can't it can't be because you drain all of the specific minerals that carrots if that's the example takes and yeah. you drain some carrots out of the soil and then no and having lived in yuma personally watching this it pulls in every insect that wants to eat carrots Yes, of like, course. Uh, yeah. So you have a massive influx of insects after one kind of crop because that's the crop you're feeding. So now you have these clouds, like we had white fly in Yuma on the lettuce crops because there was that was all there was for miles. Lettuce, 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 lettuce. I took lettuce. out the peanuts. We and, have and, peanuts for that. Yeah. And then so here came the white fly. That just covered the crops, like millions of them. No, so they and got rid of peanuts yeah. so that there would yeah. only be lettuce. At that so point. did they did they have a rotation of crops or did they have lettuce? Now they have more. No, no now they, lettuce, they have lettuce, more lettuce, now. lettuce. No, 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 lettuce, no. Lettuce, they've changed. Lettuce. Nancy, now come on they're now. changing. Yeah. Well, no, they're changing now because they had no choice. And they had yeah. But and and in all due respect, they probably didn't know until they did it and had the results. They didn't know that by planting only one kind of crop would bring on one kind of insect that would bring on one disaster, mm. okay? To be clear, okay? That they probably didn't know. Some to people be fair. might have known, to be fair. Some people could have known, some people, didn't know but, but i mean if you go back to old, some old school things mm -hmm. i mean we're always learning in science mm -hmm. and that's a good thing but in some so some old school things are not good mm -hmm. and we've learned now you know as science is always progressing mm -hmm. but um i think whenever you're doing anything on a mass quantity yeah that's Look when out. things get that's when things i mean in general i just yeah. even you're clothing how trouble. many how yep. many times do people see each other and they're wearing the same dress or the same shirt or, you know, the same, you know, you go to a party and it's like, oh, we all bought it at the local Tesco, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tesco, Tesco, whatever, you know, I'm trying to be English here, but you know, it's like, mm. here it's Walmart, 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 Walmart rules the world. Oh, careful. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. Amazon and Walmart ruin yeah. everything, you know, yet at the same time, it's this big convenience. But how convenient is convenience at the end of the day? I think that is really mm -hmm. the the it topic of this it conversation. Is. Exactly, right? it is. You know, it is there's until mining, it isn't. and people don't want to realize, but our phones, our computers, are all mine from products of mining in Africa. Um, everyone, watch Blood Diamonds, and while you're at it, watch Blood Elephants too. Um, so you in in Blood Lions, watch all of this. Do you see the the absolute destruction not only of the land but human mm -hmm. beings what they are going through you know we talk about slavery today about what has happened in the past and and i'm mm -hmm. always one of these people saying we have slavery now we do we have human trafficking now human trafficking Big and we time. have slavery that we are all paying for in our clothing mm -hmm. yep. and in our computers in anything digital we are contributing so again at what cost is convenience to us it's not that convenient well, that, that's the that's the old nimbyism isn't it it's not in my mm. backyard so i can't see it you know the fact mm. that everything we're buying has had a knock-on effect in the third world mm -hmm. you know because 
they when we're now being told to turn everything into electric you know we're being told electricity is the way to go but the problem is to use a lot of this electricity in the way things are being uh, generated it all takes something else that is taken from another country exactly. to actually do this for the batteries for instance you know mm -hmm. the batteries in these electric cars are they they're not made of they're not made of cardboard you know these batteries mm -hmm. they're, they're mining stuff to make these batteries and that is a problem mm -hmm. in the country that they're mining the stuff but we don't care because it's not happening on our backyard. See, but this is a balance. This is this balance we have to really look at. I mean, offshore wind, we've done interviews on this in a lot of ways, it's beneficial. I think we have to diversify like solar can be mm -hmm. really good, but you don't, I, we did an interview um, with the executive director of the Texas Aquarium, State Aquarium. And this was such a good conversation because we talked about conservation and yet they have their aquarium and they do the rescue and they work with the oil refineries. They have the cleanest bay water, yet their oil refineries are right there on the bay in Corpus Christi, Texas. Mm -hmm. And this is where the, the oil is shipped out of. So right. they go, OK, we better work with the aquarium and make sure the water's clean because they get these mass amounts of sea turtles that come in because of climate change are mm -hmm. frozen five to ten thousand at a time. And the aquarium comes in, they open a wildlife rescue center. So we had talked about oil. And so the first thing is, well, what do you think about oil? He says, we're in Texas. And yes, I'm sorry, that is part of who we are. However, mm -hmm. we can diversify solar plants. And the lady who's on the show, Margo, was like, well, everything should be solar. No, there are solar plants going up that destruct and destroy habitats, wildlife habitats. We've stood oh, up and done shows on them and uh, they want to put them all in the desert in mass fields. See, it's oh. this mass field of things of, hey, we're going to put up a solar plant. And so when they're doing that, you're destroying the habitat for the tor desert tortoises, which are practically in going on endangered almost. You're destroying habitat for these mm. birds, for these lizards. And if they go away, then this dies over here, right? The web of life. So. But then I said to him, he says, it's about, think about it as our retirement portfolios, right? And in finance, you want to diversify. If some, one mm -hmm. thing goes out, you want the other thing yeah, to be able to step else in. To kick in. Yeah. So we have to look at diversification, mm -hmm. just like we're talking about agriculture. It's the same thing with our energy. Mm -hmm. Not everyone should have, everyone have electric cars. No. When we had snowstorms, people couldn't start their cars because they had no electricity exactly so, so there's all of these um i'm all you can't you can't, you can't do mass you can't do mass i don't know you can't I, everybody you can to, do solar you on your at, house that's that's good it's on a roof that's not hurting anything but look at you look know at nature nature diversifies and it sprinkles so there's a whole bunch of different plants in one square acre. If you leave it to nature, there'll be a whole bunch of different plants with different insects. So you don't have a mass crop taken out by one insect. It's a whole bunch of different plants yeah. in one place. Well, that's not convenient to us. So we turn around and go, oh, because we're so smart. Yeah, let's make it all one plant. Oh, okay. Now you get all one insect. So now you have one big old big loss. You but the trouble is, as well, it's all well and good us going on to solar panels yeah. and things, but solar panels are made of plastic. Exactly. And they have all of these battery filaments in them. Mm. And that they're all they they don't last very long. So they all need to be recycled again. And then but they're not going to be recycled because they'll be chucked out on a waste tip, won't they? You know. Yeah. And when we're, we're not investigating other sources now behind me is a river and mm. water power is not being investigated enough because tidal tidal power is there all the time. It never changes. It is always in and always out and it will never stop as long as we've got the moon. So why aren't we using tidal power? Because probably because it's not sexy enough or whatever the well, well it depends whatever. on where you are like in this country depends on where you are because yeah, we're having droughts in some areas the water has been sucked up for a mass there agriculture. is no water 
Yeah. From Mass. What, Mass what, yeah. What I'm saying yeah. is, you know, where there isn't tidal, fine, use solar. But where right. there is tidal, use tidal. Where there is wind, use wind. You know, exactly. don't just think, oh, why? I mean, our England is not well known to have sunshine from wall to wall, yet we've got solar panels all over the place. And we've even got solar panels covering very good farmland. Now, that's totally ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous that they we have oil derricks on land. people's farm. So yeah. they go in. No, so there's yeah. ancient farms, right? And they'll go in mm -hmm. and pay a family because, okay, so when it comes to farms, so we have this big poison company that comes in and tells people to buy into their pesticides and to their modified seeds. And we won't go into the name because they changed their mm -hmm. name for the good of the people. Well, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'll start it with Agent Orange. So they go in and um, eventually these farmers get put out of business, the small farmers, mm -hmm. and they buy into this thing thinking they're going to help and do all these things. The small farmer has the hardest task on the planet in this country. I, I really believe oh, they for do. Sure. And so then, you know, if they're not diversified and do all these extra things we're talking about, incredibly difficult. And so some of them die off the end if water's not there. So like the Colorado River, which is the Nile of America, is drying up. I mean, that's it. Yep. And then they go in with a water plan and it's one size fits all. Instead of understanding that the farmer at the bottom of the river is not the same as the farmer at the top of the river. OK, those are two different mm -hmm. things. And so now and one farmer doesn't need as much water as this farmer over here and depend it, it's. Everything Depends has got to be growing. more right. So, like going with what you're saying, it's it's this localized thing. It cannot be one size fits all. Yeah. It cannot be um, everybody goes with the same crop. Like if carrots grow in Yuma, good for them. And if strawberries grow in California, which they do really well in February, good for right. California. And and for us as travelers, if you're making everything cookie cutter. We might as well just walk around all of us in the same uniform. I mean, what's what's the point? I mean, it's 1984 coming up just now. Like yeah, that's yeah. how it's starting to feel. Yeah, and exactly. So in, individualism is is being completely threatened about being told about how to behave, what to say and do. Nancy, you need to behave yourself. <laughs> but, but, talking to me. No, I that ain't no, gonna happen. No, no. I know, but I'm just talking about individualism. And regionality and locality goes far bigger than what we're talking about. Yep. That is diversification. That is integrity of the land to the people. And I feel like even politically, we're trying to do like one size fits all across the country, around the world, and it doesn't work. Electric yeah. cars may work for downtown LA, but not up in upstate New York where they have snowstorms. No. no. Uh, so we so have it, to look at that. And, and we don't Every, want one size to fit all. Well, we really don't. I That's think the corporation's I think it comes, bottom line money thing. Yeah. One size fits all. Make more money. That's that. That's a corporate And then they America. pay the politicians. Yeah. So and then they pay off the politicians. As, so we need to do as local. People, <laughs> as humanity, we do not want one size fits all. As animals. The animal kingdom does not want one size fits all. Man. Only, only thing on earth that wants one size fits all is corporate and cookie cutter. Yeah. With a cookie Castle. cutter report. And, and they want only, the report that yeah. that just has the same cookie cutter stuff, right? Instead of actually mm -hmm. investigating and really yeah. realizing they don't want to, they want to do minimal work for maximum dollars scrape off the top and and throw the pennies sail to their the yacht. rest of us and yeah. sail their yacht oh yeah well i'm gonna go well, there that's, that's the main thing but, and and the problem is who's paying it's always going to mm -hmm. be us the people us. at the bottom mm -hmm. and yeah. the planet well and mm -hmm. and going back to the farmers half of the farmers now are uh selling off their old trees yeah or forests it's a shame yeah um so they're coming in clear cutting land mm -hmm. and putting oil derricks on their yeah. lands or billboards for politicians <laughs> and political <No>. states. <laughs> but that's a truth. It's a true thing no, happening across the country. It. We travel, we literally see it. Yeah. And um it's not normally the things we talk about, you know, what we do. We do a lot of interviews about this stuff, but you know, a good rant is important because it is a good it's a wake up 
And Absolutely. I really cool. believe everything we've talked about with you, Glenn, over the years, whether it's family history, travel, you know, buy local, it comes down to there mm -hmm. is no travel and get a new experience if we're all cookie cutter. No. Life is boring. Yeah, what's the point? That means yeah. your kids need to look exactly like the kids next door. That's why I was always against school uniforms. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sorry. But look, I mean, there's some benefits to uniforms. That's but funny. Mm -hmm. It's more cost effective for families. But it, I just really, really think we've got to take control of our own backyards mm -hmm. as individuals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, take control in that we need to take ownership of what's happening and go, mm -hmm. hey, how much do we really need? How much, what would be better? What do we want? Go to the local meetings because if we can hold our local governments accountable and mm -hmm. use our voices and actually do things like volunteer and, and and like today is Earth Day, you know, and well, by the time this airs, it'll be midnight for you. <laughs> Sorry, Earth Day's over. But, but oh. you know, Earth Day should be every day. This yeah, is something yeah. that we should look at volunteering. If you want your local park to be clean, start cleaning. It'll it. help. Yes, exactly. It'll help. It doesn't take It'll much, help. does it? Like I say, starfish mm -hmm. on the beach. If you do a little bit, it, it's all going to have a knock-on effect. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Glenn, thank you for having a good rant with us. Did we we yeah. ended on a positive, right? <laughs> well, I think everything's a positive because we've we've brought it out into the open and hopefully, I mean, not being funny, but if if five people actually sit back and think about this, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's five people yeah. who hadn't done before. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a staff in speech situation. You know, if we can I make a that. difference to even one person, we've made a difference. And that's what that's what counts. Yeah. And who doesn't love a beautiful starfish? They are They're magic. so cool. They're so cool. I love the you starfish know, because it's, it's really it's true awesome. about it. We don't think this expectation thing has to go. I think the expectation is a real critical danger. I think we have to have expectations, but don't overdo well, it. You know what like, I mean? What is, what is your real goal? How do you expect to get there and why? Like, is it, oh, everybody wants to be rich. To do what? What do you call rich? What's rich? Is rich going outside and seeing a clear blue sky and blue jays? Mm. And, and a starfish. And, and you can breathe. Or is rich, oh, I have this big condo in the middle of L.A. and I can't go outside because it's smoggy and it hurts my lungs. Well, I, which is weird. It's quite, quite funny because when I first started my business, I was looking at what is a five star experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a lot of people, a five star hotel is a five star experience. Um, a lot of people for for the the best experience in the world would be staying in a five-star hotel in Dubai, for instance, right? And at that time, I used to think to myself, for the Queen of England, a five-star experience would be, a, would be actually being able to pop into the local market and buy some t potatoes and carrots, because she can't do that. And, and a five, you know, an experience beyond your wildest dreams is actually different to everybody because it should be for for the queen actually going out in in the street and just having a wander and enjoying the the nature is impossible she can't she can't have a wander about in the middle of Deerham, for instance right. because she'd be mobbed by people so a five-star oh. hotel experience for her is run of the mill that's not an experience mm -hmm. that's not anything special so what is special? What is what is value mm -hmm. for money? What is richness? You yeah, know? that's interesting because you say five star million, hotel in Dubai to me yeah, is like having, I, having I have twenty five no, million in the bank is not worth anything no, to me. No, to me, I, roughing it in the bush with African an, animals now that's, that's a five cool. star experience. That's I want to see cool. warthogs and lions, and yeah. I want to be dirty in the dirt. I don't want to be in some luxury mm -hmm. hotel that's overlooking mm -hmm. a fake lake, you know, a fake exactly. ocean. Exactly. What is the point? So that is the whole <laughs> point. That is why I decided that I would not use what I call spit and cardboard hotels because they <laughs> might be five star, but they're still spit and cardboard. They're mm -hmm. exactly the same in Dubai as they are in London. And who wants to be in the same place? And Glenn wants real sausage for breakfast. 
Uh, well, it's you, know, you, have a really, you have a really good point because like, we have the hotel chains and you you know so you wake up in the the same room that you had three weeks before except you're in a different city but it's the yep. same colors what's the point the same but if there's no enjoyment in that it's yeah. easier for them at the bottom line for them it's more money it for them but it's it's but no good for it's me not a consumer luxury experience luxury is having something that is completely different like yeah. staying in Catherine's lovely a bed and breakfast that's been in her family since 1360 you know that, that is something special yeah but, yeah that's cool standing yeah, that's in your cool. ancestors footsteps like when you went to canada and and yeah. stand in your ancestors footsteps you know yeah, got that halifax in nova scotia mm -hmm. it was a, a tingling in the back of the neck feeling and that's, uh, that's there's money can't buy that the one place we stayed that was part of benjamin franklin's family Mm. oh yeah that yeah. in it's connecticut like mm -hmm. 1700s place that we stay it was awesome it i mean they had so the, the original cauldrons from yeah. the 1700s and it's yeah. right there you go you know to make coffee yeah. in this teeny teeny little kitchen because it was the kitchen from then mm -hmm. they had a newer part of the house but we were on the older part and we i mean we were it's all we so could do cool. any side but it, but you're walking every morning. I looked at this cauldron and went, like, what hmm. the heck were they making? Like how much, like what was really? going on with that? I mean, were they boiling bath water? Like what, yeah. what were they doing? They laundry, like, you know, and, and you could still smell it from the use over all these years. Yeah. And these people are caretakers to the land and they also raise pigs and bunnies and chickens. And then they sell them locally. And so when we were there, they, the, the delivery of them was late, which I wanted to play with them, you know, but they're like, I hope you understand these are all going to market. They will be, you know, slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I get it. And they're very mm -hmm. much about um, that hyper local that we're talking about this, this, if you eat what is raised locally, you're going to be healthier and you're supporting yeah. each other. And yeah. um, I just, I think we've got to get more, more and back to those roots and and it's about having human relationships and so we're going back to that customer service thing we've lost mm -hmm. customer service and that's why we all came in on a rant because we've all just gone through some really bad customer service but or lack of lack of customer service means things are not being taken care of they're not being watched there's no attention to detail which makes people's blood pressure goes up you know and do bad things like it's not healthy Right. And then we're not having um, connection with the land. So there's no when we lose these connective points of human humanity, human connectiveness, I feel we've lost connectivity with the land as well. And that is not a good thing. Things no. just get packaged and processed and packaged and processed. Shipped and out. we are becoming what is being processed and just wear the same thing. Do the same thing. Give us your paycheck. Move on. Same thing, 1984. Everybody have a box. nice day. <laughs> oh, everyone, I keep up with Glenn. Um, I'm not making light of it at all, obviously. Um, Norfolk-tours.co. Norfolk-tours.co.uk. I can say mm -hmm. it. I've been saying it for years. Mm -hmm. um, and his articles are up on blendradioandtv.com. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know about nature in England, go see his articles on nature. Uh, the <laughs> nature uh, na nationalparkplanning.com and of course we're here every fourth saturday with glenn next time we'll we'll not do as much ranting right glenn next time well, we'll we might not we might we might who knows we might knows? We, we were good about politics right uh but everyone keep up with us at bigblendradio.com thanks so much glenn thanks, thanks glenn. girls see you later